Hey everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and in today's video I'm going to share how to make this quick and easy crochet journal cover. It's that time of year where we're starting fresh planners and journals, so I thought it would be fun to do a project like this to personalize our books. But if you aren't interested in a cover, I hope you'll still watch because this pattern stitch is also perfect for scarves and blankets. If that's the case, you can jump straight to the tutorial. There are timestamps below on the progress line, but beforehand I am going to share some tips on how to measure this and how to easily adapt this pattern to fit the measurements of your personal book. Okay, I think that's about it, so let's play some hooky. For this project, I used a Karen cotton cake. This is a medium form, requires a five millimeter hook, but I used a four millimeter because I wanted to make the stitches a little bit more tight. Now this is a self-striping yarn, but it's intended for bigger projects like blankets. So it's not going to stripe for you naturally. I just went ahead and made little bundles with the separate colors so then I could have more control of the striping. This yarn is 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. It gave a nice stretch, not too stretchy and not too tight. To get started, there are a couple of measurements that you want to plan out ahead of time. We're going to be working these stripes vertically, so we want to start our chain count on the largest width here. This is where we're going to begin our foundation chain. Mine is about eight inches wide, but this will vary for all of us. You just need to focus on a multiple of three for your chain count. The next measurement you want is the width. This is 10 when I lay it flat, but then it stretches to about 11 when I wrap it completely with it folded in place. So I went with about 10 and a half to 11 for mine. Remember your yarn is going to stretch on you a little bit, so you definitely don't want to go beyond these measurements. And then don't forget your measurement for your flap on the inside. I would recommend about two to three inches for this, because remember when you're opening and closing books, it kind of stretches away. A little tip here just to double check, you can always make a little mock-up cover for yourself. I did a simple one here with just some paper that I taped together, made some flaps for myself, and then double checked by wrapping it around the book. To work this pattern, we're going to be doing multiples of three plus two at the very end for your turning chain. So for this five by eight book, we're focusing on the height of the book. I did a chain of 30. As you can see, I've got just a tiny little bit of stretch here. You don't want to stretch it too tight, just a comfortable stretch here. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to chain 15 just so you can get a clear idea of the pattern. To begin, we're going to make a slip knot with our hook. Just wrap the yarn around your fingers, pull the yarn through the center, and tighten. Now working with your multiples of three, go ahead and do your chain count. I'm going to do 15 for this demonstration. And then once you've done your multiple of three, go ahead and add two more. This is going to be your turning chain. For the next several rows, we're just working with half double crochets. This is going to be our inner flap for our book cover. I would recommend that you focus on doing at least five to seven rows and half double crochets. Now I did change colors for all of these stripes, but if I were to do it again, I would just do the flap in a solid color. So for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to switch colors, but I will show you how to switch colors later in the video. To do a half double crochet, yarn over, going into the third chain from the hook, one, two, three, Go in, yarn over again, and pull through all three loops. That's a half double crochet. Now we're just going to work in the top of all of these chains, creating half double crochets. It's very easy to accidentally skip the chain right next to the slip knot. So if you don't have the right count, it's probably right there where you missed it. And then when you're ready, chain two and turn. Working into the same stitch right below those chains, this is going to serve as your first half double crochet. Just a little tip here, sometimes it's confusing on where to put your stitches. What you want to do is make sure to twist it so these two bars are facing you. This is where you want to go in with your stitch. Right into those and pull your yarn through. If you go into these two stitches here in the front by accident, you'll notice on the other side that you're going to get a ribbing type effect. 
We're just going to continue doing this for the next five to seven rows, whatever you've decided. I'm coming to the end of row two here. And be sure to catch that very last stitch. That's the one that's easy to miss. Once you've completed your first flap, it's time to start on the bobble row. Don't change colors. We're going to go ahead and do our first row of bobbles with whatever you use for your final row of half double crochets. When we're working a bobble stitch, we're working on the wrong side. So whatever your measurement is that you're working on, make sure that the row that you start on is an even number. For example, here I did three rows of half double crochets and I'm starting on row four for my bobbles. When I worked on my pattern, I did seven rows of half double crochets. So on the eighth row, that's when I started my bobble. To begin the bobble row, chain one and turn. Create a single crochet in the very first stitch. Another tip here to know that you're on the correct side for your bobble stitch, your tail will be on the right hand side when you begin. That's if you're right handed. Now if you're left handed, the tail will be on your left side. We're going to do three double crochets together to form our bobble. To do three together or a bobble, yarn over, going into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through just two. It's like you're doing a double crochet and you're not finishing it. And now you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over, going into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two, and stop. And as you can see, we have what looks like two double crochets in this stitch. We want to do this one more time. Yarn over, going into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And now you have four loops on your hook and three double crochets. Yarn over and pull through all of the stitches on your hook and that's your bobble stitch. Now to anchor it down, we're going into the next stitch with a single crochet. And try to do this close and tight because you want it to anchor down. Yarn over, pull through. And as you can see, it pushes the bobble to the front here. And that's why you want to be working on the wrong side because it's naturally going to puff to the front. Okay, in the next stitch, you're going to do another single crochet. And now we're going to do another bobble stitch. So the sequence that you're looking at here is you're starting with a single crochet, a bobble, two single crochets, bobble, and then two single crochets with the bobble all the way across. So forming a bobble again, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Make sure you have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all of your loops. Anchor it down with a single crochet in the next stitch and then another single crochet, just to give some space between your bobbles. Continue this all the way across, and you will finish with just one single crochet at the end. So you have one single crochet at the beginning and one single crochet at the end. We're coming to the end of the row here. I've just done a bobble with two single crochets. I have two stitches left. So I'm doing a bobble, and then one single crochet to anchor it down. It's time for a color change. We're always going to be doing color changes after two rows from here on out. To change colors, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can either just go ahead and fasten off and then just reattach with a new color, or you can finish this final stitch with the color that you want to use next. To do that, just pull the yarn back to where you have those two remaining loops on your hook. So remember when you were doing a single crochet, before you finish it, you have two loops on your hook. So instead of finishing it with that color, just bring in your new color and pull it through. So you've completed that stitch and fastened on your new color. And then at this point, you can go ahead and just cut off your previous color 
you can kind of just tie it together just a little bit just to anchor it in place a little bit it is going to loosen up on you don't worry about that too much once you weave in all the ends that will be perfect and now you're ready for your next row now if you aren't switching colors and you're just working with one solid color what this is going to look like for you is three rows of half double crochets bobble three rows of half double crochets bobble but if you're working the stripes like i'm doing here you're going to do your two rows of half double crochets change colors do a row of half double crochets and then a bobble and then continue on like this all the way until you've completed your cover your scarf or your blanket once you've chained your two go ahead and turn this does not serve as your half double crochet you're still going to do a half double crochet in that very first stitch And now we're going to work half double crochets into the top of these baubles. This was a three stitch sequence. It was bobble and two single crochets. So what we want to do is just work into the top of this bobble here. That's one. Here's a space here for number two. And then here's another space for number three. So we did the first half double crochet. Now we're going to work into the top of that bobble. half double crochet in this stitch and then a half double crochet in the stitch over to the right of your bobble there we go and that will give you those three to keep in line with the count of your bobble stitches that you made just continue this all the way across And then at the end, if you recall, we just did a single crochet at the beginning and end of our bobble row. So you just want to make sure that you do a half double crochet in that very first single crochet there. And then chain two and create another row of half double crochets. And that will complete your two rows of half doubles. Okay, and if you're following along with this pattern now, it's time to switch colors again. You're going to be doing a row of half double crochets and then a bobble row. I'm pulling this back just to get ready to join my next color. Remember, you don't have to do it like this if you don't want to. You can just fasten on and off with slip stitches or tying it on, whatever's easiest for you. And then I'm just bringing in the new color. And now just continue on with a chain two turn your work now we're doing our next two rows that represent the bobble rows and that's a row of half double crochets and then a bobble row so i'm just doing half double crochets all the way across okay and now we've done our first row of half doubles for this next sequence and now just chain up one because on the bobble stitch we're just starting with a single crochet in that first stitch so I've chained one and turned and working in that same stitch do a single crochet and then work your bobble stitch sequence which is a bobble two single crochets bobble two single crochets all the way across and I will put this sequence in the description box below for you to refer back to and that's all there is to this pattern for the body of your book cover scarf or blanket just continue on with this sequence until you've reached the height or measurement that you're wanting to achieve Okay, I continue going along until I reach the width of my book. Here are my three rows of half double crochets for the flap. I'm not including that, just there where the bobble is. So you can check with the measurement and then you can just double check with your book, see how it's laying or wrapping around for you. And that's giving a nice tight stretch, so this should be perfect. And then when you're satisfied, it's time to continue on with the other side and other flap. So with all that said, I'm just going to continue on now working on the three rows of half double crochets. Remember, I do suggest that you do at least five to seven rows of half double crochets if you're doing the book. So all you need to do for the flap is just bring in the sides. And then I recommend just anchoring them down with a stitch marker. The nice thing with these stripes is you have a little guide here to make sure that you're getting things straight. Okay, and once you've tested this and you feel like you're ready and it's perfect, now we're going to go ahead and do our single crochet border and attachment. 
So what I like to do is I'm going to do a single crochet to start next to the bobble here. And then I have a row of single crochet. So I'm going to do another single crochet to keep it consistent. And then I'm going to do the same here. One, two, a single crochet per row. Okay, making sure that I get both sides. I'm just going to go in, fasten on. It's the same as a single crochet. Try to line this up the best that you can. There we go. I'm going to try to get that edge there with that edge and we're good to go. I'm going to continue on with this little border piece here. I'm going to just fasten that down, include it in that one row there. And now I'm just going to do single crochets all the way across. Just play with this, you know, add and remove single crochets. If you're finding if it's getting too wide on you, then take some single crochets away. Or if it's getting too tight, be sure to add a couple of single crochets. Okay, I'm coming to the next flap here and I'm just double checking that I've got it in the right spot. Again, I have this line to help me with that. And then just fasten this off and repeat on the other side. And that's all there is to it. Now just go ahead and weave in your ends and you're ready to put your cover on your book. 